Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new video. This one's all about skyscrapers, but skyscrapers that never got built. I actually, a couple of years ago, I went up to the tallest observation platform in the world, which you think the Burj Khalifa is the tallest building in the world, and it is, but the observation deck is actually lower than the observation deck on the... It's a really tall ba building in Beijing. Um, and the observation deck is higher and I went up that and it was awesome. So I like skyscrapers and I thought we'd make a video about them. Off we go. Ever since the first skyscraper was completed at the end of the 19th century, architects have competed for their buildings to hold the title of world's tallest building. A completed skyscraper stands as an example of mankind's incredible ambition, creativity, and of course, execution. Yet some architects seem to have an excess of ambition and creativity, and the result is that their skyscrapers just don't get built. Today we'll talk about the most impressive and absurd skyscrapers that, well, never were. Let's kick off with the only American entry, Ultima Tower, the second tallest building on our list. The Ultima was designed in 1991 by American architect Eugene Tsui, with plans to build it in the San Francisco Bay. It would stand at 3,218 meters tall, with 500 stories, housing a million inhabitants, and having 1.5 billion square feet of space. Its base would be circular, with a diameter of 1,828 meters, which is about 6,000 feet. The building's shape was modeled after termite nests, because as the design team explained, they are the largest structures built by any non-human living creature. And I'm sure that's that's valuable or something, but it is like, wh why not just use your architecture skills? <laughs> why would you look at termites? The Ultima is, of course, a skyscraper, but it's also an example of arcology, meaning it's a system so large that it has its own ecosystem. All I know about arcology is I was a pretty big fan of the game SimCity 2000, and like when your civilization got super advanced, you got to build, I think they were called arcs, which were super cool. Anyway, considering that it would stand over two miles high, the building required a system to stabilize air pressure. The designers hoped to harness the imbalance in air pressure to generate energy using a never before used system called atmospheric energy conversion. They would also generate electricity with solar panels, wind turbines, and converted sea algae. While living in a massive structure might seem like you'd be removed from nature, the architect was determined to create a natural environment inside. His plan stated that the building would contain four of the world's largest waterfalls and that there would be plenty of outdoor areas for humans and animals to roam. If you want to live in the country, just live in the country. There's loads of space. Each apartment would be 100 feet by 100 feet, which sounds pretty spacious. In fact, it sounds massive. Except that half of that space would be taken up by natural vegetation. Again, if you want to live in the country, live in the country. You're not buying an apartment in a city and being like, yeah, 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 I'm really glad that it's filled up with trees. Thanks. In order to provide natural light for this vegetation to thrive, the central core of the building would be hollow with mirrored walls. As Sui believed, this would evenly distribute sunlight throughout the building's interior rooms. The structure would be connected to San Francisco and Oakland by two six-lane bridges, each one leading to a 20-story parking structure below the building. While this might sound like a convenient spot to park your vehicle, you would only be given access if your car ran on electricity, propane, or hydrogen. I've heard of the electricity and hydrogen. People are going to run cars on barbecue fuel? Once inside, the quickest way around would be to take a taxi, which of course would be electric, which the architects specify would be funded by the homeowners association. So either way, you're paying for it. Our next megastructure takes us to Japan, the proposed site of the Shimuzi Tri-2004 Mega City Pyramid. Also, that's a hell of a name. The Mega City Pyramid was conceived in 1996 with plans to build it in Tokyo Bay. The Mega City was inspired by the Pyramids of Giza but would stand over 14 times taller at 2,004 meters, that's 6,575 feet. And by the way, that's twice the size of the current world tallest building. Its base would flare outward to cover an area of 10 square miles or about 3.2 by 3.2 miles on each side. The pyramid would be made up of five gigantic trusses, all providing support for two. 104 smaller pyramids, each one the size of the Luxor in Las Vegas. And I've stayed at the Luxor? That's a fairly substantial pyramid. The incredible scale and weight of the building would be too large for materials that currently exist, so the construction is dependent on the future availability of super strength and lightweight materials based on carbon nanotubes which are currently being researched. Does this really count then? <laughs> be like, yeah, 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 no, I'm working on Simon's big tower. 
It's, uh, it's entirely theoretical and it's made out of sponges. Imagination. Uh, but, but let's put it on the list. Some engineers doubt that even the strongest concrete available could support this structure. The pyramid was designed to house one million inhabitants and provide office space for 800,000 people. One of the design team's main concerns was transportation through the pyramid, so they included moving walkways, high-speed elevators, and lateral moving pod-based transportation systems. The company claims that building will begin by 2030, though analysts see that as an impossible target, as, again, the materials required have yet to be invented. Kind of a stumbling block again, guys. Still, the company has stated that they expect the megastructure to be completed in the year 2110. They are just pulling dates out of their bottom. Any conversation about skyscrapers is incomplete without at least one entry from Dubai, which leads us to the Dubai City Tower. The Dubai City Tower was announced in 2008 following the final moments of the pre-financial crisis construction boom. It would stand at 2.4 kilometers high and it would have 400 floors. The design was inspired by the Eiffel Tower as it included six exterior structures winding around and eventually joining with one central structure at various heights. Besides their aesthetic appeal, it's a great looking building you will be seeing it now. The exterior structures would disperse the building's weight across a wider area, providing for a more stable base. Each 100 floor section of the building would include a distinct neighborhood with its own design style, as well as essential services like grocery stores and restaurants. The top 400 meters of the building incorporated a wind turbine and many other energy harvesting structures which were included on the building. Now, while many of the skyscrapers in this video have been using elevators to get from floor to floor, as you might expect, this one would use vertical high-speed trains traveling at speeds of 200 kilometers an hour. The construction of Dubai City Tower was considered a real possibility before the global crash of 2008 to 2009, and the project site was said to be Jumeirah City, an oceanside section of Dubai near the Palm Jumeirah and the World Islands, which I actually did a video on in detail on my other channel, Mega Projects, which I'll probably forget to link below, but if you search like uh, the world, I think, I'm not sure what we called it, maybe the world, but mega project and mega projects, it'll come up. Some optimists, or maybe we could just say egoists, still believe that one day this will be built. However, it does look unlikely as Dubai's construction industry is making up lost grounds on other and more high priority projects. So let's stay right in Dubai for another project that many people believe will actually be built one day. It's called the Dynamic Tower, and it would stand at a reasonable 420 meters, making it the only entry on this list less than a mile high, and it's shorter than many buildings that already exist. So, well, why is it in this video? Well, each floor of the Dynamic Tower is able to rotate 360 degrees, independent of the floors above or below it. Every single one of the 80 floors would be able to complete a full rotation in three hours, meaning that the outer edge of the building would travel six meters per minute when moving full speed. The rotation is controlled by voice commands, it's good they got those details in there, and those in charge could determine the speed and direction of the rotation. However, it's unclear how many people will live on each floor of the building and who would be in charge of rotation if each floor contains more than one residence. Still, the image of a moving building is intriguing, and digital 3D models of the building show just how beautiful the structure could be. The second innovation of this building is that it's meant to be the first ever prefabricated skyscraper. While the core of the tower would be built on site, about 90% of the building could be built in off-site factories. Each floor consists of 40 individual parts which can be constructed and assembled off-site before being shipped to the construction area where they'd just be added to the core of the building. The project's designer, David Fisher, claims this would reduce material and labor costs and could allow for the project to be completed about 30% faster than a project of a similar size. The Dynamic Tower was announced in 2008 and Fisher claims that it would be completed by 2010. It wasn't. He's also refused to say where it would be built as he wants it to remain a surprise. However, after almost a decade of dormancy, talk of the project picked up again in 2018. The rumor was that the Dynamic Tower would be built in Dubai. That's exactly where I would guess it would be in the year 2020. But, well, now it's 2020 and no one knows about its construction. Perhaps the Dynamic Tower could be built one day, but one of the main concerns is that by his own admission, the architect is not well known, has never built a skyscraper, and hasn't worked regularly in architecture for decades. I'm sure it would be a like to hold if it's ever built, but uh, I'm gonna say it's unlikely.
Our final and tallest entry is the Xseed 4000. Also, the, I, I, I'd be surprised if I didn't choose this one for the clickbait image for today's thumbnail because it's a beast. This is a skyscraper designed by the Taisei Construction Corporation in 1995. The design was inspired by Mount Fuji, and the scale is quite similar. As Mount Fuji? The final height of the building was set at 4 kilometers tall. That's insane. Just about 250 meters taller than the mountain that inspired it. Its base would be 6 kilometers wide and the entire structure would be located inside the Tokyo Bay, although there might not be enough space for it next to the Mega City Pyramid. If you're wondering why so many of these buildings were supposed to be built in bays, the main reason is that unused land, especially large and stable enough for such massive projects, is hard to find in densely populated cities like San Francisco and Tokyo. The Xseed's design included 800 floors and was meant to house anywhere from 750,000 to a million inhabitants. Though the details aren't as clear as the Ultima, the Xseed was meant to include vast areas of nature parks and wildlife to give its inhabitants some room to get some fresh air all while inside the building. The designs also included zones for retail and commercial office space so you could stroll through the park on the way to work without ever leaving your apartment building. Instead of elevators, I think to call this an apartment building is a bit of an understatement. Instead of elevators, the architects included vertical maglev trains as normal speed elevators could take 15 or more minutes to ascend to the top. Due to the incredible 12,000 foot increase from the bottom to the top floor, the plan was to include a means of stabilizing the air pressure in the upper reaches of the building to allow for a normal oxygen supply. Sort of important. So, like the Ultima, Exceed was classified as an arcology project as the architecture calls for its own unique ecosystem. The goal of the building was to completely supply its own energy use by way of photovoltaic solar panels, though engineers speculated that the building of this scale would not be able to do so without dedicating entire floors of the building to energy harvesting and storage. Although, to be honest, they definitely have the space. Exceed is considered the largest thoroughly designed building ever conceived, though critics point out that the building was never meant to be built and that it was designed as a publicity stunt for the Taisei Corporation. Whether or not it worked, Taisei Corporation is still in business to this day, though the tallest of their buildings is still less than 10% of the size of the Exceed 4000. Which is still big. I mean, good job, guys. Now get on that X seed. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button. If you didn't, there's a dislike button for you to use, but you watched to the end. So, as I say, unless you hate watched it, give it a like. Subscribe. Thank you for watching.